Hello again, everyone. I think you'll agree that we've had a great start already to this year's National Health Research Forum. To those I don't know, I'm Mary Woolley, the CEO of Research America, and it is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for today's programming, Ms. Dawn O'Connell. Ms. O'Connell serves as the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, or ASPR, within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and also serves as Secretary Becerra's Principal Advisor on Public Health Emergencies. That makes her a very busy person. ASPR leads the nation in preventing, responding to, and recovering from the adverse health effects of man-made and naturally occurring disasters. ASPR coordinates interagency activities between HHS, other federal agencies, and state and local officials responsible for emergency preparedness, as well as the protection of the civilian population from public health emergencies. Prior to this role, Ms. Ms. O'Connell served as a senior counsel to Secretary Becerra for COVID-19, another big job. She has also served as the director of the U.S. Office for the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness and Innovation, CEPI, CEPI, I should say, a global partnership to accelerate the development of vaccines and other biologic countermeasures against pandemic and epidemic threats and to assure access to them for all. As director, she was responsible for managing the broad spectrum of CEPI's U.S. and North American interests, including relationships with stakeholders, government entities, and industry partners. O'Connell served as a senior counselor to Secretary Sylvia Burwell and Deputy Chief of Staff to Secretary Sebelius uh, during the Obama-Biden administration. In these roles, O'Connell advised the secretaries on high priority domestic policy, global health and humanitarian issues, including infectious diseases, public health emergencies, and refugees. She worked with HHS, HHS leaders, the White House, and other federal and international partners to resolve key policy challenges, lead implementation, and drive progress toward administration goals. And those goals have benefited the, con the country. O'Connell received a Bachelor of Arts in Literature from Vanderbilt University and a Juris Doctor from Tulane University School of Law. She's an avid runner, lives in Washington, D.C. with her husband, Ben, and two daughters, Franny and Maddie. Thank you for being with us today, Assistant Secretary O'Connell. I'm so happy to turn the floor over to you. Welcome. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And thanks for all that you and Research America do every day to promote the research needed to solve the hard problems facing our country. Speaking of hard problems, ASPR's mission, as Mary mentioned, is to help the country prepare for, respond to, and recover from public health emergencies and disasters. We do this by providing, among other things, the tools the country needs to respond, such as vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. And to ensure that we have the right tools against the right threats, we have worked closely with many of you, our private sector partners, to support billions of dollars in critical research and development initiatives over the last 19 years. And while so much of our research and development at ASPR has been focused and funded to address chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats, as we were founded in the post 9-11 era, we have found ourselves more and more in this post COVID period working on emerging infectious diseases. And the shift reflects the changing threat landscape we face and the likelihood of another destabilizing pandemic or epidemic occurring sooner rather than later. Our world is increasingly interconnected. We are just an airplane ride away from any number of diseases coming to our shores. And our world is heating up, literally, which is resulting in infectious disease outbreaks uh, that are more frequent and more enduring than ever before. In this changing world, we have some funding to work on these new threats. And in some cases, we also have been able to leverage some of our legacy research initiatives against these newer disease outbreaks. But in other cases, we'll have to seek new funds to develop the countermeasures needed to protect the nation from disease spillover events in the future. 
And to be clear, the work we have always done to prepare the, the countermeasures necessary for the country to respond to chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats continues. We just need to widen our aperture to include these emerging diseases as part of our ongoing preparedness work. And with this framing in mind, I'll spend a few minutes sharing some of the ways our ongoing research efforts have supported three recent and ongoing disease outbreak responses. And then I'll also highlight two programs that may be of interest to you as you look to partner with us in the future. Now to the, to the three disease outbreaks that we are currently engaged in, the H5N1 outbreak in dairy cows, the clade one Mpox outbreak in Central and Eastern Africa, and the ongoing COVID-19 response work. First to the H5N1 outbreak in dairy cows. The good news is that while this pandemic flu virus has circulated among dairy cow herds this summer, there have only been a handful of human cases and thankfully all of them have been mild. But we remain vigilant and continue taking steps to shore up the country's preparedness posture. And this includes leveraging longstanding work we have done to have an effective vaccine ready to go against any number of pandemic flu strains. Our team at BARDA, in close partnership with CDC and private companies, has a library of potential pandemic flu strains, a stockpile of adjuvants, and contracts in place with a handful of manufacturers to quickly produce a vaccine against whatever circulating pandemic influenza virus strain may be. Uh, for the current H5 outbreak, we have identified a well-matched antigen in our library. We already have bulk doses manufactured and have begun fill and finishing those doses to have them ready should a vaccine be needed in the current outbreak. In addition to this work with the traditional egg and cell-based vaccines, we learned a lot during COVID about the benefits of having an mRNA vaccine ready to go. mRNA technology, as you all know, allows for accelerated initial vaccine development, which could provide needed protection quicker than our more traditional vaccines. So this summer, we announced a partnership with Moderna to support advanced development and, if needed, procurement of an mRNA-based pandemic influenza vaccine. This partnership is the largest mRNA investment to date in ASPR's pandemic flu program. We anticipate making additional announcements in the future. Moderna's mRNA pandemic flu vaccine is currently in early clinical development, and we'll share more to come as it progresses. Now to our MPOX work. I mentioned earlier that we are funded for some of the disease outbreak work we are currently doing, and that is the case for pandemic flu. But for other work, we are leveraging our legacy investments. And that is what we've had to do for MPOX. We have a very robust smallpox research program. And fortunately, many of the countermeasures we've developed for that program are also effective against other orthopoxes, such as MPOX. We have several vaccines as part of our smallpox program, including Genios, which was added to the stockpile so we would have a smallpox vaccine for the immunocompromised. Our team invested over $2.1 billion with Bavarian Nordic to develop the Genios vaccine. And during the clade two Mpox outbreak in 2022, Genios became the preferred vaccine since many of those impacted were also at risk for HIV. We are now watching closely the outbreak of clade one Mpox in Central and Eastern Africa. And fortunately, Genios protects against both clade one and clade two. We recently worked with USAID to donate 10,000 doses of Genios to Nigeria and another 50,000 doses to the Democratic Republic of Congo. And while the process for distributing and administering those doses is being worked out in country and with WHO and other international partners, we remain watchful to see what more may be needed. While ASPR's mission is to protect the homeland, we know that we are safest here when we can stop, stop outbreaks where they start. So we will continue to look for ways to support the outbreak response in Central and Eastern Africa, while also doing all we can to prevent a resurgence of MPOX in the United States. In addition to Genios, the BARDA team has also invested over a billion dollars in the development of the therapeutics TPOX in Tembexa. We've been pleased to make TPOX available as part of ongoing clinical trials here and in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Finally, to COVID. As we head into the fall and winter respiratory season, I know that it is top of mind. BARDA was an important partner in Operation Warp Speed, supporting the development of the initial vaccines and therapeutics in the early days of the response. 
Now that we have had those vaccines for a few years, we have seen the need for newer, better vaccines with longer protection against a wider range of variants and with the potential for easier storage and administration. Last year, we announced the $5 billion Project NextGen program to accelerate and streamline the rapid development of the next generation of vaccines through public-private collaborations. Uh, these vaccines will be targeted against COVID-19 and other potential future threats. So far, Project NextGen has invested in four vaccine candidates, including candidates that are administered intranasally and orally to find the next generation of vaccine with broader and more durable protection. Investments have also been made to support enabling technology to allow for easier vaccine storage and administration through patch technology, as well as faster, more targeted on-demand manufacturing. We learned a lot during the acute phase of the COVID-19 response. We intend to take those learnings through Project NextGen uh, and deliver the tools needed to stay one step ahead of COVID while validating the use of new technology that can be applied to any number of future threats, both known and unknown. So that was a brief look back at how our research is impacting three current disease outbreaks. I'd like to turn now to two research programs that might support some of the work you are currently doing. They are both led by BARDA and seek to strengthen overall preparedness for future health threats. The first is called BARDA Ventures. Through a nonprofit partner, the Global Health Investment Corporation, the BARDA Ventures program has secured funding from venture capital investments and put it into a portfolio of 12 emerging research and development companies. BARDA Ventures supports entrepreneurs who are advancing the development of medical countermeasures and helping strengthen the nation's preparedness for future health emergencies. Growing this community of innovators is part of ASPR's strategy to fortify the nation's health security. Unlike government contracts or grants, which are typically project specific, BARDA Ventures invest directly in companies like a traditional venture capital fund. This approach helps the companies attract other sources of financing, accelerate the development of their technologies, and build sustainable businesses. The second research program that I would like to highlight is ASPR's DCOR. DCOR is the Decentralized Clinical Operations for Healthcare and Research Program. It's focused on the work of decentralizing clinical trials. DCOR was in many ways catalyzed by the COVID-19 pandemic which as you know, accelerated the shift towards decentralized healthcare. However, the pandemic also highlighted challenges in conducting clinical trials for medical countermeasures, particularly for products used in clinical settings outside of hospitals and closer to patients. Product developers face challenges in recruiting, enrolling, and retaining patients. DCOR aims to leverage the shift to decentralized care and improve clinical study capabilities by partnering with organizations that offer clinical care directly to patients in places like retail pharmacies, telemedicine providers, mobile clinics, and urgent care clinics. DCOR partnerships, such as the one we announced recently with Walgreens, are helping boost preparedness for future public health threats by allowing medical countermeasures to be tested where patients seek care in real-world environments, enabling greater ease for participation in studies and promoting equity through access to diverse populations. Our hope is that both BARDA Ventures and our decentralized clinical network can be leveraged in the future to support the development of products that we are partnering with many of you on. So Mary, thank you for this opportunity. In closing, I wanna thank each of you for your support and interest in the work we do at ASPR. We've been able to make a difference in the H5, MPOX and COVID responses because of the partnerships we have with many of you. And we look forward to continuing that work together potentially through BARDA Ventures or our new decentralized clinical trial network so we can help the country together be ready for whatever may come next. And with that, I want to once again thank Research America for inviting me to speak today. I wish all of you the best with the remainder of the important forum that you're having. And I look forward to more connections and collaborations with each of you. So Mary, on that note, thank you so much and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Assistant Secretary. I know we all learned a great deal from you. I'm very excited about Bart of Ventures and your C Core. Is that what it is? D Core. Um, That's right. Program decentralizing um, clinical trial 
uh, trials, a, a, some, a subject very close to my heart and um, definitely in need of innovation. And that's exactly what you're doing. So we thank you for your service, for all you are doing, and we applaud you. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks again. Thanks so much. For our audience, um, please stay tuned for our next session, Accelerating Innovation Through Clinical Trials, Patients, Regulators, and Research, which will begin in just a few moments. You can access this session in the lobby of the Zoom events platform. I hope you all tune in to all the upcoming sessions today and tomorrow as we continue the 2024 National Health Research Forum. Bye for now.